Hoy en la noche del Lobo Cine os traigo The Red House, una película de intriga producida de la mano de Delmer Davis y basado en la novela de George Agnew Chamberlain. Música del gran Miklos Rotsa, para mi gusto uno de los grandes compositores que ha tenido el cine, por supuesto sin olvidar a John Williams. Rotsa fue candidato al premio Oscar en 16 ocasiones, obteniéndolo en tres, por películas como Recuerda, Doble Vida o Velor. Con un reparto de lujo, con actores como Judith Anderson, Rory Calhoun, Arthur Space o Edward G. Robinson mítico actor de cine negro que participó en otras producciones tales como Pepe, Los Diez Mandamientos, Mi Geisha o Millonario de Ilusiones. Peter y Ellen, interpretados por Edward G. Robinson y Judith Anderson, viven en una granja junto a Meg, su hija adoptiva. Debido a las dificultades que enfrenta Peter para realizar las tareas diarias de la granja, Debido a que éste tiene una prótesis de madera, Meg lo persuade para que permita que su amigo Naf les ayude con sus labores. La película tiene una duración de 100 minutos aproximadamente y está en versión original subtitulada al español, debiendo activar los subtítulos si tu deseo son leerlos. Sin más, os dejo con The Red House. Dense forest once covered all of Piney Ridge, but no longer is the region a mystery. Modern highways have penetrated the darkness and brought in the light. Not so in Oxhead Woods, further south. Step into it off the abandoned road that hugs its length and it's like passing through a wall and closing the door behind you. Obsolete trails wander vaguely, crisscross or break at right angles for no reason. Only one leads to the Morgan farm. Pete Morgan's farm has the allure of a walled castle that everybody knows about, but few have entered. Its only access to the outside world is a country road that passes by. Some miles north connects with a highway near the Renton farm. Joe Renton, like the other farmers hereabouts, is up and coming, raises good apples. Fine soil everywhere in the valley. The young people for miles around come to the high school boys graduate a little older than those in the city. That's because they take time out for planting and helping with the harvest. They're a healthy lot. And girls don't come prettier any place. Are we going swimming Sunday? Sure, if I'm not needed at the store. Where will you change into your swimming trunks? Maybe I'll wear them over. No. Bring them. 
We'll change at the reservoir. Who else is coming? Just us. Hi, Teller. How's hunt? Bye, kids. Miss me. What are you doing so close to civilization? You're growing up, Tibby. You're almost a woman. Almost? I'm woman enough already. I wouldn't say that. Oh, what do you know about anything? You never got past the ninth grade. I'm good at plenty of things they don't teach in school. Digits? I promised Pete Morgan I'd bring you by the farm this afternoon, and I don't know how to ask you. <laughs> Looks like you've asked me already. What does he want? You better ask him. Well, how long will it take? Not so awfully long, Nate. <sighs> We're here already. <laughs> okay, Meg, let's go. <laughs> hey, Nate. What's Tibby gonna say about this? Oh. <laughs> what do you think she'll do? Yeah. <laughs> this thing, Meg. I'm not so sure it's a good thing. We've been content of the way things were. Maybe an outsider will spoil it. But it would be so much easier for you if Nath would come and help out at the end of the day. Anything between you and Nath? No. He and Tibby Renton are going steady. All right, I'll see the boy. Never could turn you down, could I? <laughs> <laughs> Nick says good things about you, Nate. Maybe you're not as stocky as you might be. Stop growing too soon, Mr. Morgan. Mm. How's your mother's store getting along? Oh, well, some days we don't even make a dollar. What do you want to see me about, Mr. Morgan? You know about my leg? Wood. My sister and Meg have got a curious idea that uh, it's hard to climb a ladder with a wooden leg. <laughs> well, it isn't. No, oh, sir. Much more, they've got an idea that uh, things are getting a little run down here. Can't do as much as I used to. And so they've talked me into hiring somebody. They'll help along with the evening chores. I'll pay 35 cents an hour. Well, could you make it four bits? It's over an hour's walk home afterwards. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. I'll pay 50 cents an hour. Could he start today? Sure it's all right with you, May? Oh, yes. Come on, Nate. Ellen! Ellen! Pete's hired Nate. Good. I just hope that Pete hasn't become too used to doing things alone. I do hope it works out.
sure you don't want any more, Nate? No, thanks, ma'am. Bet nobody will believe me when I tell them I had supper here. Why not, Nate? Well, didn't you know you and Miss Ellen are known as the mysterious Morgans? Are we? Well, they won't say it anymore. Not when I tell them what a swell layout you've got here and that you spread the best table in the valley. It's because we're so self-sufficient here. We seldom have any need to go to town. What else do they say about us, Nate? Oh, nothing. Except things like Meg not being your daughter, or even related. Why don't they ask me? Well, I, I guess they'd rather whisper gossip than find out the truth. What gossip? Well, they say Meg's mother and father ran away and left her when she was still a baby. Well, that's not true, Nate. Meg's mother and father went down south to find a new farm. They left Meg in our care. They died down there in a runaway. Pete and I adopted Meg legally. There's nothing to be whispered about, Nate. She was only two years old then. There's nothing wrong with being adopted. I'm grateful. Sure. And the next time I hear anybody gossiping about it, I'll say, so what? Meg isn't the only adopted girl in the world. Well, I, I hate to eat and run, folks, but I think I better get started. <laughs> Kind of late, so I thought I'd take a shortcut through Oxhead Woods. You know your way through those woods? No, but the wind's cleared the sky. Well, I'd take the long way around if I were you. I've owned the Oxhead Woods for years, and I'm as brave as the next man, but I wouldn't cross through those woods at night. The woods haven't scared me since I was a kid, day or night. Yes, but you said you didn't know Oxhead Woods. A tree's a tree, and a trail's a trail. The trails lead nowhere. Let the boy go, Pete. I don't want him to get lost. Close the door, Pete. I don't want him to get hurt. Wait. Don't take the Oxhead Woods. The footbridge across the creek is out. I'll jump across. Well, there's fog on the other side. I'll find my way around it. Look, Mr. Morgan, they take a long way around. But I'll save two miles by cutting through the woods. Yes, but you won't save yourself from the screams in the night that'll lodge in your bones all your life. Screams from where? the red house. Well, if I come to it, I'll give it a wide go by. You can't. Did you ever run away from a scream? You can't. It will follow you through the woods. It will follow you all your life.
Yes, Mrs. Storm, they're sleeping here tonight, so don't you worry about it. <laughs> uh, hard work and a big supper never hurt any boy. Oh, don't you mention it. We're glad to have them. Good night. How did you know he was back? <laughs> It's all right. It's going to be a great help on the farm. How did you happen to get in here? I ran here. You scared the daylights out of me last night. Seems like the truth shouldn't scare anybody, man or boy. The truth? You and your screams in the night almost... What are you talking about? Now, don't tell me I imagined all that stuff. I went in those woods and I heard things. What things? I don't know. I don't know whether it was the screams you were talking about or just the wind. You leave well enough alone, son. Go in and wash up. Join us for breakfast, and you can catch the school bus with me. What kind of a guy is Pete, anyway? He's always been wonderful to me. Kind and generous. For my last birthday, he sent to the city and bought me the most wonderful furniture he could buy for my room. He's always been that way. But what about that red house? I remember hearing him talk about it a long time ago. But I've never heard him mention it since. You haven't? No. He's just warned me to stay out of those woods since I was little. Do you know anything about those screams? I don't know, Nate, and I'd be afraid to find out. Hey, look who moved in with the Morgan. OK, so I'm working there. So make something out of it. <laughs> Got nerve, Nate Storm. Where were you last night when I phoned like I said I would? Working. Working? All night long? Aw, oh, Tibby, can't a guy even earn chore money at the Morgans without you throwing a fit? Not if it takes all night. Hi, Mom. See, you're not bowled over by the rush of business. Oh, things have been like this all day again. I suppose folks get tired coming and asking for things they haven't got. Look, Mom, why don't you close the store and marry Don Bryn? He's a nice guy. Now, there's time enough for Don and me to get married after you're out of school and on your own. Graduation's just around the corner. Why don't you two go ahead and get married while you're still young enough to enjoy it? Shame on you, talking to your mother that way. Well, you've given enough of your life to me. You go down to town and tell Don you're ready any time he is. He's being transferred north. Well, that settles it. Here he's been courting you since I was in grammar school. 
If you don't marry him now, he'll meet some chick up north, and then you'll be a dead duck. <laughs> well, I've got to change. I'll be late at the Morgans. How do you like it up there? Oh, it's okay. They eat good. I mean, well. A couple of things got me wondering. How did Pete Morgan lose his leg? He fell down a cliff in the Oxhead Woods. It was a long time ago. You were still a baby. It was Dr. Byrne's first case in the valley. He amputated the leg on the Morgan kitchen table. I wonder if it's the one I ate at. That was the first time Dr. Byrne ever met Ellen Morgan. Everybody knew he fell in love with her, but nothing ever came of it. I wonder why. He's still a bachelor. I don't know. They still act like they love each other, the few times I've seen them meet. But she chose to devote her life to her brother Pete, I guess. Seems a shame. Just like it'll be a shame if you don't marry Don and go north with him. If I do, how long will it be before you and Tibby get married? Oh, search me. Sometimes the more I know about women, the less I know about women. Guy needs more than a high school education just to find out what they're gonna do next. Will you be staying at the Morgans again tonight? No. I'm gonna take a shortcut through Oxhead Woods by daylight, so I'll know my way back here tonight. Well, if you should change your mind, would you care if I go down to town and talk things over with Don? You do more than talk things over. You come back here a bride. We don't want any dead ducks in the family, do we? <laughs> Bye. We always have more eggs than we can use. Meg. I guess Nate asked a lot of questions on the way to school this morning. Yes, but only questions I've wondered about myself. Things you've never explained. Can't you tell me, Pete? Well, I didn't know that anything troubled you. Why are you suddenly questioning things? Because of him? Maybe. Well, maybe he won't come back. I think he will. I hope he does. Meg. All of a sudden, you seem so grown up. I guess I don't like to see it happen. I wish you were a child again. I wish you needed me just as you did then. I don't want you ever to grow away from us. You mean everything to Ellen and me. I want you to be happy. I love you both very much. today. I had to go home first. 
came here through Oxhead Woods. Yes, that would be the quickest. Daytimes. Or any other time. Don't put so high a price on courage, son. It's overrated. The lowest animal has got more courage than man has. You touch a snapping turtle with a stick and he grabs at it with his teeth. Cut his head off and he, he still won't let go. Well, we humans weren't made that way. We were born helpless. But we don't have to stay that way. Nobody's gonna call me yellow. Who has? Nobody, yet. And nobody's going to. <laughs> Has he been outside tonight? No. Give me your word. Of course. Why, well, you're soaked through, Nath. Get a blanket from the chest, Meg. You can stay in the helper's cabin. I warned you, but you wouldn't listen. It wasn't a piece of that red house that knocked me into the stream, Mr. Morgan. And it wasn't a scream in the night that bowled me over. It was a human. A human strong enough to nearly kill me. I figured it was you. Sometimes we figure too much, son, the wrong things. Things that can't ever be figured. Mine is bad, bad for everyone. It's quicksand. I need your help here, Nate. Why would I want to hurt you? What do you think happened, Pete? There's a curse on those woods. We know that. to stay with us, Nath? Why shouldn't I? Well, after what's happened, I thought... And Tibby doesn't want you to, does she? After what's happened, you couldn't get me out of here with a triple barrel shotgun. Last night, I was a coward. There's some connection between Pete's red house and whoever hit me. I'm gonna find out what goes on out there if it takes exploring every Sunday between now and doomsday. I'll help you. I thought Pete told you not to go in those woods. I can't help it. I want to. Okay. 
Sunday we'll go prowling. Well, what about your date with Tibby? I want her to be sure that... that I don't want you to stay here just because... I mean, I, I don't want her to think I'm trying to steal you away from her. We did have a date to go swimming Sunday anyway. So maybe asking her to come along will keep her from throwing another fit. Good night, Nath. And thanks. Good night, Meg. Who's got hold of who? Hey, kids. I found an old trail. Maybe it leads somewhere. We've been on a wild goose chase for four solid hours. Find your haunted house on your own time. You're on my time now. Or have you forgotten we had a date to go swimming this afternoon? Just the two of us. Remember? Let's go back to the farm, kids. The sun will be just right for swimming. Nate! What's happened to you? Why? What's the matter? Well, there's a black and blue streak across your shoulder. How'd you get it? Well, that. I... I don't know. Of course you know. You might let me in on your secrets. We haven't any secrets. We told you about the red house. Look, Tibby, I, uh... I slipped in the stream last night and fell on my shoulder. Come on, I'll race you across the pond. Aren't you coming in? You had a swimming date. Just the two of you, remember? I'll sign. I like to be kissed. Hey, lovebirds! Dinner's ready! Oh. 
Are you and Nace planning to be married, Tibby? Well, I like to keep him guessing, Mr. Morgan. She's like an ornery heifer sometimes. Hard to hold down. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you at our house, Tibby. We've missed having company. You must come back often. Besides, we like to keep Nath happy. Have you had a pleasant day? Well, we wasted most of it looking for a haunted house in the Oxhead Woods. I didn't know there was a haunted house in the Oxhead Woods. Well, Nath says it's red and he's got to find it. Isn't that silly? Yes, it is. May I go with you? Yes. See, there's enough trouble in this world without having to go out and look for it. Well, I'm all the trouble he can handle if he only knew it. Well, when you are keeping a secret, blabbing to Pete. I didn't blab, it just slipped out. And a fine swimming date we had, I don't think. You know, Tibby, you're mighty pretty. Especially when you're mad. And I guess maybe, maybe when you're mad, you're just about the prettiest gal there is. Are you sure you don't want me to get Pete's pickup truck and drive you home? Can't have your cake and eat it, too. You have chores to do. I'll walk home, thanks. Don't suppose I'll be seeing much of you weeknights. Well, what with final exams coming up and this new job... I know. Would it be too much to ask that we spend next Sunday by ourselves? Just you and me? Or is it more important to play hide-and-seek in the woods with Meg? Go on, get madder. Makes your cheeks pink. I don't think you're going to talk me into a kiss goodbye. I want you to miss him. Long enough to make him more important than haunted houses. So save up for next Sunday. Thought you were napping, Pete. Disobeyed me. Now, you listen to me. I'm listening. You went into the woods with Nate. Well, why shouldn't I? There are Because only... I've asked you not to. We didn't find anything. All we did was keep getting into one dead end after another. I don't care. Now, you listen to me. All I have in the world is you. If there's anything you want, I'll get it for you. But there's one thing you've got to do for me. You stay out of those woods. I've grown up, and I've got a right to do as I please. I've never laid hands on you in my life. But I'll take the word to you if you do. Pete! Got your suit in that bag, haven't you? What are you doing here? Waiting for you. What for? I want you to do me a favor. You've got looks and all the rest besides. Besides that, I figure you're the kind that's got more sense in your head than comes out of your mouth. Maybe I have. What kind of favor you want out of me? I've got 750 bucks. I want you to buy me a government bond. Seven hundred and fifty dollars? Where'd you get it? Just steal it? I want you to buy me that bond. Have them write my name on it and buy it the next time you go to town. 
There's an extra ten for your trouble. Oh, I couldn't take sure my... Sure you could. And keep your mouth shut to boot. I'll be waiting every Sunday till you bring it. Why don't you buy it yourself? Because a guy in the village bank's got too long a nose. And because it'll be a prettier bond if you buy it for me. I better get home. You want me to help you cross the stream? I get. How much more do you want? of mine or I'll get someone who can. Well, why don't you keep your trespassers to home? You gave me full rights to the Ox Head Woods exclusive. I gave you the game rights in exchange for keeping trespassers out. Look, Mr. Morgan, if you can't keep your own hired hand out of these woods, maybe I should use more than a club to scare them away with. Well, why don't you? You're telling me I can use my gun? I don't want anybody to get hurt, but there's no better way of backing up a no trespassing sign than by a bullet missing somebody's skull. Hey, Mr. Morgan, I'll take care of my end. This is going to be fun. And it's going to be more than that. It's your last chance. Be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray to thee to bless all those on earth who are suffering in heart and mind, body and spirit. Grant them the blessing of hope and faith and strength. Pete, you haven't eaten, you haven't slept. Hello? Yes, Tibby, I'll call him. Tibby wants you. Hello, Tibby. No, I'm coming over. Well, you can use the pickup truck, Nate. Pete says I can use his pickup truck. I'll come on down. Bye. You know, when I was a young man and in love, Sunday was always a good day for spooning. Thanks for the use of the truck. Always ready to give love a helping hand, aren't we, Meg? That's right. And I might add, it's a lot healthier than prowling in woods. I 
I don't care what Pete said. I wish we were prowling in the woods today. I wish Tibby had forgotten our date. So do I. There's something out in those woods. And something tells me we won't find out what it is until I find the red house. What are we going to do with it when we find it? Bust it open, I guess, and let some light in. Maybe it'll shake the creeps out of a lot of things. We'll find it. this for your graduation. I wasn't going to give it to you until then, but because it's a gray day and because I want you to be happy, I, uh, go ahead, open it. Forgive me for barking at you last Sunday. I didn't exactly disobey, Pete. I've always wanted to go into those woods. I did it because I felt I had to. It was strange. I felt I belonged there. Don't ever go near those woods again.
Chippy, you've got Meg all wrong. Didn't she ask you up to spend the day and have dinner? Yeah, but why? Can't anybody do anything without you figuring they've got an angle? I've always got an angle. I've got an angle on you. A girl always has a reason when she does something. Does she? Sure. Okay. And what's your reason for dawdling with that guy, Teller? What do you mean, dawdling? Just what I said. You think I didn't see you? How could you? Where were you? In the bus. Where'd you think I was? Oh, that. Yes, that. Was there some more dawdling I didn't know about? You don't think I'd be interested in a big dumb ox who makes his living hunting? Well, you were interested enough to stop and talk to him that afternoon. Well, he was sitting on our rocks. I told him to get off him. And what did he say? He said he would. I'll bet. You're calling me a liar. Now, don't make something out of nothing. All I said was, I'll bet. You bet what? I'll bet he said he'd get off your rocks. Is that calling you a liar? Pop was right. Right about what? You're too bright to be wasting your time up at the Morgans for four bits an hour. Well, they just live off their farm. We make a profit on ours. Since when is there a law against living off the earth? We're gonna live off the earth someday. Before we're finished, we're gonna leave our kids a good farm. I wanna clear out of these hills when I get married. Since when? Since now. I don't wanna be just any farm wife. This is as good a time as any other to find that out. Well, if you love someone, you'll do anything for them. That works both ways. Maybe someday you'll own this whole valley. And we can spend our winters in the city house. Sure. With two station wagons and a limousine. Why not? I better get back to the Morgans. What for? Let you go on with your dreaming. I'm disturbing your sleep. City house, station wagons, limousines. Great. Boy, when you dream, you really dream good. Well, aren't I worth working for? Sure. And a lot of guys are working on getting to the moon in a rocket. They think that's worth working for. But I like the ground around here, and I'd just as soon keep my feet on it. How much money have you saved doing it? None yet. Not even $750? Not even 750 cents. Why? Nothing. I was just thinking. Nate, didn't Meg go with you? I thought she did. She was gone when you left. Didn't she leave with you this noon? No, only as far as the porch. Did she say she was going anywhere? She must have gone into the woods alone. I knew you'd come. Are you hurt? Yes, I think maybe my leg's broken. Here, hold this. Now, put all your weight on the other leg. happy here until that boy came. Meg loved me, trusted me. Did everything I asked. And then he came. I'm losing it. I fought fate 15 years ago and I lost. You know that, Ellen. Stay away from that house. Yes, Pete, you tried. She kept calling. 
I had to go to her. Don't dig it up again, dear. It's buried. It's past. Buried until that boy came here. Nath doesn't know anything about it, Pete. That's all in your mind. Do you think there's a man on earth who hasn't something to conceal? Every living soul has his oxhead woods. I can still see her. She knew there was nothing I could do about it. He knew it. Don't dig it up again, dear, please. Why Forget didn't it. they go before it happened? Please. Why did she scream? I loved her. She knew it. Why did she cry out? It's been 15 years, dear. Put it out of your mind. Don't let it drive you mad again. It's gone. It's over. It can't touch Meg. There's nothing I can do about it. There is something we can do about it. We can protect her from the past. How can I protect her from the past when I can't shut it out myself? We can shut it out of this house. No, no, this isn't my house. There's no certain place for me on Earth. Except out there in that ice house. That's where I belong. What did Meg should find out? Pete, Pete, how could she find out? I didn't want her to go. I'd rather she was dead than ever hear the screams. I'd rather she was dead. I'd rather I died out there in the muck and dirt. That's where I belong. I should have burned that place down. No, no. They'd search the ashes and find her screaming. I should have burned it down and the ice house and the woods with it. Don't you dare. Don't never dare. Ellen, Pete, open the door. Ellen. What's happened to her? I found her in your woods. Her leg's broken. Call Dr. Byrne. Call Jonathan, Pete. Pete Morgan, we need you. Our Meg's leg is broken. Come quick. through the woods. They were all grown up. Where did they start? I don't know. I headed uphill just past the big limestone rocks we saw that Sunday. How's Tibby? Search me. She's gone to town for something. Graduation dress, I think. Bet you miss her. Tell me about the Red House. After the limestone rocks, what? Well, I followed these tracks through the rocks. The road's hard to follow, but it led to this hill. What hill? I don't know. I was too busy following the tracks to see. I looked down from the top into the rocks. And there it was. What did it look like? Ugly and awful. But, Nath, I had the feeling I'd been there before. Well, lots of people get that feeling, Meg, even if they haven't. No, this was different. I even seem to remember the ice house back against the rocks. Water shimmered and up from under it. As if it were flooded. How do you know it was an ice house? That's what scares me. I know it was. But how did I know? Well, didn't you go look? I didn't dare go without you. My heart started pounding. You sure you didn't hear screams? I think I did. I think that's why I ran. I don't know.
Go to sleep. Good. Sleep soundly, Jeannie. Next room just now. Yes, I was. You sneaked up the tree. You were there with her in the dark. Is there a law against me seeing her? Yes, mine. There was peace in this house until you came. You took her into the woods. Meg went into the woods on her own. She wouldn't have gone if it weren't for you. Her leg wouldn't have been broken if it weren't for you. You've got no right to treat her like a child. You caused all the trouble you're going to. I don't want you here anymore. Get out, now! You don't need to think I want this job. I can work for Rittens any day I like. Clear out. Never trespass on my property again. If you do, you'll get hurt. Is that fair warning? Yes, that's clear enough. You can take one place off. Nate's quit. He's gone to work for Tibby's folks. Without even saying goodbye. But it seems they needed him this morning. Said to say goodbye to you and Meg. That's not like Nate. He's a nice boy. What are we going to do for help? We can manage alone. Meg will soon be up and around. We can manage alone. Just you and me and... Uh... Meg. Did you quarrel with Nath? Don't lie to me, Pete. Why should I quarrel with a boy? For the same reason you killed Jeannie's husband. Because you wanted her all to yourself. <laughs> full-time job now that school's about over. <laughs> I was putting some dishes away and the wall cupboard came down on my arm. We'll miss Nath, won't we? It's going to be lonesome for you, isn't it? Why don't you padlock the store and go up to the Morgan? I've quit there, Mom. I'm going to work for the Rentons. Well, with Tibby around, then you won't be lonesome. I'll be OK, Mom. Well, happy honeymoon. Thanks again for everything. Goodbye. Son. Bye.
Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Mom. How's my patient? I bet it feels better with that cast off. I've been cheating a little, Dr. Byrne. I tried walking without my crutches. Uh-huh. I brought up the mail. Where's Ellen? Gathering the eggs. How's everyone in the valley? Oh, new baby at Sheriff Hoax. New hired hand at the Rintons. Who? Mrs. Storm's boy, Nath. Yeah. Everybody's wondering what the Rintons want most. The storm boy for a son-in-law or an extra hand on the farm for free. Is Nate living at the Rintons? No. I see him going back to the store nights. Say, wasn't he working here at the time you broke this pretty leg? Yes, but he had to get a full-time job. He's got a full-time job handling Tibby. She's a wild one. Well... I've got a few babies coming, a few old folks dying. I've got to be going. Hiya, Pete. Hello, Doctor. Our Meg's about as good as new. Young bones knit fast. Yeah, well, thank heaven she was luckier than I was. Yes, but then a girl needs a pretty leg more than a man does. With a little help in being careful, she can forget the crutches. Well, I'll help her. I'll take care of her. I'll watch her like a same Bernard. How's Ellen? All right. Say hello to her for me. I will. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Remember when I had to learn to walk again? Just like climbing a mountain all day long. Better lean on me. Mustn't try too much the first time. I just want to help you. That's what I'm for. That's what I like. Oh, hi. What you got on? My new play suit. Do you like it? It's all right. You might as well still be working at the Morgans for all the fun you are to me. If you'd spend a little more time working around this place instead of preening your feathers like a pet canary, maybe you'd know what it is to be tired at night. I had a nice Sunday picnic all planned for us tomorrow down by the stream. But I'm not going to waste it on you. You sleep all day if you want to. No, oh, just till 10 or 11. You didn't sleep till any 10 or 11 up at the Morgans because you wanted to see her. Go stick your head under a faucet and cool off, Tibby. If you want to go on that picnic tomorrow, I'll be here at 11. Finally made up your mind to come. Here's your bond. I've been here every Sunday. Well, I couldn't get here before today. Who do you think you are standing me up? You've been drinking. So what? Well, I'm sorry I came at all. I'm sorry I got your old bond. Did you tell anybody? You're drunk. Who are you kidding? You can fool around with pretty boy Nay Storm as much as you like. But when you decide on a man, you come to me. You had to catch him when he was drunk. Just try it sometime when he's sober. Just once, he'd kill you.
See you're not wanted? Yeah, I can. The next time you feel like snooping around Oxhead Woods, read the signs. The part about at your own risk. Why? Because some yellow belly will sock me in the dark? Because I got full rights to them woods. Who gave them to you? Pete Morgan. Then would you be knowing how Meg broke her leg? No, I wouldn't. But if it was you snooping around these woods, you get this. Come on, Tibby, let's get out of here. This is the way it could always be, Jeannie. We don't need anybody else. What's the matter, child? I don't know. Just heartsick, I guess. You miss Nath, don't you? Yes. And something's wrong here. I don't know what it is. Wrong in what way? Ellen, who is Jeannie? Where did you hear that name? Pete's called me that several times, and when he does, I'm afraid. When has he called you that name? Up in my room when my leg was hurt, and out by the pond. Has Pete ever laid hands on you? No. Why do you ask that? Finish the dishes, dear. You're working too hard, Pete. Why don't we get Nate back to help? You're better off without him. I'm sure Meg misses him. She's young. She deserves the company of a nice boy like Nate. A little fun. That's what you said about Herb Snell years ago. Herb Snell was fun, remember? I didn't have time to learn how to dance. I was too busy earning the money that would make it possible for me to ask Jeannie to be my wife. And Herb Snell was busy becoming the best dancer in the valley. Nate's like you were, not Herb. He's a fine boy, honest, a hard worker. He has a girl. What does he want with Meg? Meg needs to be with young people like Nate. You can condemn her to loneliness. Meg belongs here with us. You want to chain her to this place all her life? All my life, yes. I've given my life to you, Pete, because you're my brother and I loved you and you needed me. You know what it's meant to me, what I've lost. You know what Jonathan Byrne and I might have had. Well, did I ask you not to marry him? No, but you wouldn't let me take Meg with me if well, I did. did. Did you expect me to? Whatever happiness I get, I've got to find while I live. You can find happiness by giving it. Well, do you think I could find it with that boy back here? Do you think he stopped prowling in those woods until he found the red house? He wouldn't stop at that. He'd dig deeper. He'd dig up a skull and bring it home as a trophy. What do you think that would do to Meg? What do you think would happen to her if she found out the truth? She'd loathe me all the rest of her life. But you've got to be fair to Meg. All right, so I'm not fair. But I can't let her go. As long as the red house stands in that quarry, my whole life is Meg's and her life is mine. <laughs> do, Ellen? 
I'm going to burn that place out of Pete's mind. I don't care if it starts a forest fire. It's going up in flames tonight. You can't go into those woods. I know them well enough. It isn't that. I didn't tell you or Nate the whole truth about how my leg was broken. I fell, but it was because somebody was shooting at me. I was afraid Nate would get shot, afraid... Teller. That's Pete's fault for letting Teller think he owns those woods. He's just trying to scare you, but he's afraid of me. Let me go with you. No, your leg isn't strong enough. I don't want to stay here alone. Come with me as far as Nate's cabin. Lock yourself in. I'll be back before Pete knows I'm gone. Helen? Meg. Ellen. Meg. Ellen. Meg. Wait here for me. to the Red House. 15 years those woods have been calling to me. Storm Stoller. They won't get me. Nate, it's Meg. I need help. He can't help. Nobody can help. Ellen's in the woods, hurt. Tell her shot her. I can't carry her out alone. Where is she? On the trail we took just before we reached the limestone rocks. I'll call Dr. Byrne and the sheriff. I'll bring a stretcher. Hurry. You're not going back in there. You can't do it. You'll be lost, too. Believe me, I know the woods are evil. I know what's there. I know the dangers. Oh, darling, don't. Let go of me. You don't know. You'll be fine now. You'll get everything you need soon. Nate's coming, and he's called Jonathan. Jonathan, I need him. Does it hurt as much now? Ellen. Thank you. 
pity Pete. Pity him. Love him. She's asleep. I bandaged her. Oh, Nate, thanks. I made a stretcher out of a blanket and a couple of rake handles. It's all I had. Did you get Dr. Byrne? He wasn't in. I left a message. I called the sheriff. She's sleeping awfully sound. She's dead. What you got on your mind, me? I couldn't get you out of my mind, baby. That's the way you are with me, too. Well, let's do something about it. Let's borrow your father's truck and elope. Elope? Holy smoke, Pop, it'd kill us. Come on, baby. We'll drive across the state line. I'll cash in my bond. We'll splurge it having a honeymoon that'll top any honeymoon anybody ever had. The truck's in the orchard shed. We can head out the back road. They won't hear us. She hurt bad? She's dead. Every day for years, she's died for me. You think I can forget that? But she forgot the woods. That's what's killed her. You hate me now, don't you? Yes, I think I do. You let Ellen die. You defied the woods and you were hurt. She defied them. And she's dead. Helen didn't hate me. She always understood. You leave me now, I suppose, won't you, Meg? Yes. Everything I love dies. I can't lose you, Jeannie. Don't call me that name, Pete. Who was she? Who was Jeannie? Was her real name Genevieve? Was she my mother, Pete? No, I don't know. You do know. I can't stay here any longer. Yes. She was your mother. Now, are you happy? What happened to her? Meg, for the love of heaven. She was killed, wasn't she? But it was an accident. It I... wasn't an accident. Something awful must have happened. You must have hated her. You hated know. her? I worshipped your mother. No man ever loved a woman more. Do what you married your father. A man without heart, without soul. Is that why you killed her? No, no, no. You've got to believe me, Meg. I never hurt your mother. I never even so much as said a harsh word to her. And then when you were born in the Red House, I loved you like you were my own. That's why I remembered the house. It was his fault. 
he got jealous. He took to accusing Jeannie and me of bad things. He lied. But the worst was when he was going to take Jeannie new away. I ran to the Red House to plead with your mother not to go. I heard him coming home in the Surrey. I begged her to decide before it was too late. She got frightened. I don't know why. She screamed. There was no reason I wasn't going. Then you did kill her. No, no, it was an accident. I just tried to keep her quiet. I just put my hand over her mouth. Only that. She was smothered. And then he came in the door. I went crazy. I knew it was his fault. He was the one who would kill Jeannie. I picked up a bullwhip and I beat him until he wasn't handsome anymore, until he was dead, finished. I was out of my mind. I picked up their bodies and I put them in the surrey. I whipped the horses into the ice house. The spring had broken through in there. The mud was deep, deep enough. When I came to my senses, I, I tried to kill myself. I jumped into the quarry. Ella should have let me die there. You go ahead. Start the truck. I'll catch up with you. Listen. My pop must have found I out. I wish that's all that it was. What do you mean? They're after me. Either kid, but it all adds up to murder. Murder? Signs of telling? No, Sheriff. But I heard a car here in the woods. Yeah, so did I. Come, dear. 
Don't be afraid. Just like you, Jeannie. I've come to plead with you not to go. Don't go with them, Jeannie. I can't live without you. Pete, we've come here to help Nate. He could be killed. Yes. I'd kill to keep you here. Does Herb love you that much? Enough to kill for you? Back to the village. We'll be gone, you and the baby and me. We'll be gone. I swear before God, I'll kill him before I let him take you away. You stay here with me, Jeannie. There's much time left. Decide, Jeannie, decide. what Ellen set out to do, sweetheart. I set fire to the Red House. Look 
looking forward is much better than looking back.